بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله question was asked السلام عليكم أخي this is my personal situation which I really need advice for I come from an Asian family who are very cultural in their beliefs some pray including my mother alhamdulillah but still no one really is properly practicing something which is very good is that my parents are given the utmost respect and anything they say goes. However, it is a serious issue when the parents are completely wrong and no one objects. For example, the celebration of birthdays, my grandfather, may Allah, my grandmother, may Allah guide her, frequently does bid'ah. And if I ever try to do something correctly, I instantly get shouted at by my father and he's threatened me many times, may Allah guide him. For example, if I don't shave my beard or wear my trousers below my ankles, or even with praying, he tells me to pray in the car sitting down for fard, even though a condition is you have to stand up, which he doesn't agree with, and I'm completely powerless to oppose him. My parents have also rejected the idea of going overseas, and a couple of months ago, when I mentioned the names of some ulama, they googled them and saw that they were Salafi, which they have misconceptions about thinking they are all extremists and blackmailed me saying if I act extreme again they'll send me abroad uh, so on and so forth my mother may Allah have mercy on her doesn't have a problem with me practicing but it's really only my father and his side of the family their opinions revolve around what the rest of the extended family do which is unfortunate I have been thinking to myself for about four months whether I should just move out but I'm very fearful the effect that would have on my mother and sister and until the end of the question so first and foremost ahabat fillah as the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said which means la ta'a fi makhluq fi ma'siyatillah that there is no obedience to the creation at the expense of obedience to the creator meaning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so <coughs> therefore we have to do our best to at the same while maintaining the respect which is also a right, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coupled being obedient to one's parents along with Tawheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That your Lord has decreed that you worship Him and Him alone and to parents be obedient. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned along with worshiping Him and Him alone, His right. As the Prophet ﷺ said, And the right of Allah upon his servants is that he The right of the uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over his slave or over his servants, meaning you and I, the created beings, is that we worship him and him alone and do not associate any partners with him. That means that that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned along with his right, the right of your parents. So the parents, they have Azim, uh, a great, great status in Islam. And I think we know that. And there's so many nusus to illustrate that, meaning uh, divine text from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And I believe that you understand that. But the problem lies is when the family is calling to bid'ah or disbelief or other things. And although this situation may be somewhat, somewhat unique to uh, traditional families, traditional, uh, you know, cultural uh, or families that have uh, people who are born Muslim, whether they're Somali, whether they're Asian, as you said, uh, Asian could mean uh, Japanese or it could mean the, you know, uh, what I understand from your question is probably Pakistani or Indian or perhaps Bengali. And so traditional family structures tend to be very strong and powerful structures. And when the good of them is immense and the negative of them is immense, meaning that they can be also a very negative factor when it comes to parents forcing children to get married to someone else, forced marriages or forced divorces or other cultural issues which do not have a place in Islam. And so these are things that often uh, some of our brothers and sisters face. Those of us who reverted to Islam, 
generally we don't deal with those same uh, those same challenges because why? Because our parents disbelieve more than likely more more than likely we reverted to Islam, meaning our parents worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask for their guidance. And as we ask for their guidance now, I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So the challenges are different. We have more independence and we operate more independently, but we also don't have the same structures. So let's get back to your question. What's very important, first and foremost, is all of those acts of disobedience that they want you to do, that you try to be patient, but some of those things, perhaps they're not acceptable. You know, for you to shave your beard, you to begin to ce celebrate non-Muslim uh, traditions, <clears throat> un-Islamic traditions, and so on and so forth. So it may be first, a good step is to first approach your parents in the most humblest and nicest of ways. And it sounds like your mother is more approachable than your father. So approach her and tell her and voice your concerns. And tell her you want to study the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And see how she reacts to this. So this is what I first say, that you do approach them in the most gentlest of ways and try to convince them that you want to go and study Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion. Secondly, if that is not an option and you see that they continue to be obstacles and you practicing your deen in fact. And you practicing your deen correctly because perhaps they are forcing bid'ah on you and you feel the pressure and you may even be punished. Then perhaps it is better for you to actually consider that very strongly to move out of the home because you're a man as well. You're not a, a woman who is, you know, we're not advising the sisters to move out on their own if unless need be. So the man has a, a bit more leeway in that re regard. So. I would advise you to look into that as a later step if if you don't think that the other ways are going to be uh, effective or productive. And a final thing I want to mention is also to rely, because it sounds uh, that you are in the UK, rely on your local students of knowledge there. Because there are so many brothers that are students of knowledge there and Mashiach even, that uh, are from various cultural backgrounds. Some of them have, a, a large percentage of them, I would think, I'm sure, have uh, similar backgrounds to yours. So they can even address these types of issues with more intricate uh, and uh, understanding and experience. And perhaps even they have explored these issues themselves and researched these issues or even went to the ulama of sunnah and gotten fatawa in this regard. So that is another thing I would highly advise you to do is seek out some of your local students of knowledge uh, to try to deal with this issue and especially, but not necessarily restricting yourself, but also those who share a cultural, uh, some of the same cultural challenges that you are facing, meaning that they are of Asian background, uh, or, uh, you know, they could be of uh, the various African nations uh, or, you know, where, wherever that they, you have the traditional family structure and that these are students of knowledge that come from that because they can have a, a stronger uh, context of what it's like day to day to have to resist those difficulties, whereas someone who has reverted that their experience is different. And while I've opened up this chapter, or while I've opened up this bab, I also want to mention, as we see what's going on in the cultural wars within, uh, amongst some of the du'ad and some of the people uh, with regards to various different cultures and people in their culture, we want to have the best of balances. And that balance is based on the book and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so that we understand that it is not a harmful thing that if someone deals with the needs of their community. So people should not get offended when someone focuses their dawah on the African-American community and they're African-American because they have the most relevant experience because their blood came from that. And it's not just something you inherit from your dim, from your blood, but culturally. No one can actually 
have the in-depth uh, experience and understanding of what it's like to be in a black family, except for one who was raised in a black family, an African-American family, or someone who was raised in an Afro-Caribbean family, or someone who was raised in a whatever family. So these things are also some important things that we have to consider in da'wah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that as the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his message was for all of mankind. So we don't say restrict yourself, but at the same time, people should not look at it as something negative and racist or nationalistic that people focus on the intricacies of their communities because they are the most, they are the best suited for those uh, tasks more than likely. And this is something we know from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and from the sunnah to Allah, meaning that this is the way of mankind. And that even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent people, to, to, he sent his messengers from amongst <coughs> certain people and certain tribes and certain nations. And they were all called to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But however, they knew the, the intricacy, intricacies of their people. Let's look at this in, a, in another with some uh, concrete examples. For example, an African-American. Let's drop him in Afghanistan. Okay, with the Pushtun, we'll just pick Pushtun, a Pushtun tribe out of the other tribes in Afghanistan. Okay, we know there's many tribes. So even a Pushtun in another, I don't know any of the other tribe, tribal names, but uh, there's going to be maybe a lack of understanding or the people will not accept him. But just think if you dropped an African-American and with the already the prejudices uh, that exist in that nation uh, towards Africans or towards dark-skinned people or whatever the case may be, and then someone who's just a stranger and a foreigner who doesn't know the intricacies of calling to those people, this could be quite problematic and people would not accept from him more than likely. Doesn't mean you have to be the same race, the same tribe every time you call, give dawa. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying that some that people are more suited, a mu'min generally, and this is from the Sunnah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, that they will be able to deal with the cultural intricacies and the the nuances within those cultures if they come from that culture. Or at least they understand that background. And from the thick of dawa that you'll find that are listed in the books about giving dawa and how to give dawa, you'll find that the scholars mention that that the people should have uh, the the several components when they're giving dawa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That first they need to know what they're calling to. They know, know what they're calling to. And that means they're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not calling to Hizbiyah. They're not calling to nationalism. They're not calling to this or they're calling that. But they're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not calling to themselves. Secondly, <clears throat> that they have knowledge of the people they're calling to. So if the person, if the African American were to be dropped in Kandahar and deal with only the Pushtun issues, he would need to have studied something about the Pushtu, Pushtu people and know something about the intricacies of their culture. Or he could maybe end up starting a tribal war or some other problem. He may do more harm than benefit. Likewise, you drop someone from Luxembourg into the, uh, into a hardcore, into Detroit somewhere. Okay, into a predominantly African American culture. Will the people may or may not accept him if that person does not have an idea about how to deal with the people, speaking the language of the people, and so on and so forth. So it's very important to have these types of, uh, to put everything in context and to have an idea about what, of course, what you're calling to, and it should be based upon knowledge that you're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to know what you're calling to in the fiqh fideen. This is all from fiqh fideen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the law will be khayr and fiqh fideen. Whenever Allah wants good for him, he, a person, he gives him understanding of the religion. So this is from understanding the religion. Likewise, that you call, you know, you know what you're calling to, you know who you're calling. So you know something about them. You know something about their issues. And this is not always just culturally as far as we're not just talking about nationalism or races and stuff this could be in other facets what about the one 
who is a well-educated person, comes from a totally different walk of life, and then they're going, for example, to the prisons, okay? The people may or may not uh, identify with them, okay? They may have the positive effect. Maybe that's the medicine they needed. But also, there's also the chance that they may not accept this individual because this individual cannot relate to them, and they cannot relate to him. He's calling to one thing with a language that they don't understand or a language that they don't feel, but someone who's had their experience may be more effective. So all of these things are very important in giving da'wah Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. May Allah make all of our affairs easy and good and protect us from kulli suwa makruh. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad.